guys welcome back to my channel um welcome back to the book club it's been a hot minute i always mean to film these monthly and then it seems like i get them done every three months so maybe that's just what we should settle on or just expect to be surprised by book club videos and don't anticipate them because i mean i don't want you holding your breath because then you might just die so anyway, let's jump right into it because these videos are always hella long. So I'm going to just start off by telling you I didn't read everything last month. Um, why not? Because sometimes I just feel like reading things and then I don't feel like reading other books even though I've told you I was going to read them. So my bad. Uh, but let's just start. I'm going to do like my books that I read and didn't read or whatever. And then um, just a few books that I picked up. No, you know. Don't hold me to reading them this month, but I have picked them up and I will tell you why I picked them up. Uh, so let's see, what was I planning on reading? The Baby by Abigail Barnett. Oh my God, it was so good. It was so good. I was in just ugly face tears, you guys, just crying. Like I had to shut the book. I mean, close the iPad. Like I was just like, oh, I can't believe I did this. <laughs> it's like, where do we, what do we, <laughs> like, like sobbing like hysterical sobbing so if you're if you're if you are reading the series by abigail barnett oh my god i think it's the boss series if you're reading it this is like book number five just prepare yourself because oh i've never had my heart ripped out like that before it was so 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 good i'm not gonna say too much about it because if you're reading the series you kind of know I mean, you don't you don't know what the hell is gonna happen. That's for sure. You don't know what baby they're talking about. But um, if you're not reading the series, obviously, I'm not gonna start by describing book number five to you. But if you're in it, if you're an Abigail Barnett fan, she's an amazing writer. The series is fucking amazing. It is like a BDSM kind of uh, series. Um, like they feature that, but they do it in the most like pro feminism way I've ever seen in my life. It's so amazing. Everything's amazing. Um, let's see, Barbara the Slut was next on my list. I didn't read that book. I'll do it, but I didn't do it. Oh, and then Things No One Will Tell Fat Girls by Jess Baker. And that is right here. Things No One Will Tell Fat Girls by Jess Baker. Um, an amazing book. I mean, I don't know what else I can say about it. I got it through Amazon. And it's just, it's an amazing book. It's if you have ever struggled with your body, this is a very informative book. It definitely looks at a lot of things as far as um, as far as why we feel how we feel about our bodies, as far as how things have come to be, uh, makeup, sexiness, attractiveness, whatever, like the things that we, I just, there's really, there are not enough good things I could say about this. I did not physically read it. I actually had Jess read it to me through Audible, although my life's goal is really to have her read it to me in person, because I would love that. But um, yeah, I got this book through Audible and I'm just, I'm obsessed with it. I, I'm sure you can find a link somewhere. This isn't sponsored by Audible, so I'm sure you can find a link somewhere um, that you can get your first free book downloaded, if you your first book downloaded for free, um, if you haven't used Audible yet. But I love reading these types of books, like, you know, what kind of book is this? Like a self-help, I guess, kind of book. I don't like calling it that. I don't know what they're called. Like empowerment books? Let's go with that. I love to hear them through Audible versus actually just reading it myself. So, But only if the author's the one reading it. And she was the one, one reading it. So if you don't know who Jess Baker is, she's just the bee's knees. She's amazing. So I would 100% recommend that book. Uh, let's see what else was on the list. Shitty Mom, I still have not read that book. Bump that one one more time. And then The Opposite of Loneliness by Marina Keegan. Okay, it looks like this. Okay, and can I just say that this little 20% off sticker from Target, I got this from Target. I thought that this meant like 20% off of the price that they had listed. This is actually 20% off of the cover price, which means the price listed at Target is the actual price that you're paying. And I didn't know that until my friend told me the other day. And I feel cheated because I have bought a lot of books thinking that I'm getting like an additional 20 or 30% off and then obviously never looked at the receipt. And now I just feel like they're lying to me. And so whatever. But anyway, The Opposite of Loneliness is Essays and Stories by Marina Keegan. Okay, I also listened to this through Audible. And Marina Keegan, this beautiful young lady here, she died. So uh, she died in a car accident. Um, and then someone, her teacher, I think, I, I read it a couple months ago, but her teacher, someone, um, pulled a bunch of these stories and stuff and these essays or whatever and um, piled it onto a book. Now, 
I don't think that this book would have been on the bestsellers list had it not been for the fact that the author died and these are, you know, they were unpublished stories basically. Um, because it is dull, it is hard to relate to, it is a lot of like whiny sort of white girl problems. It's just, oh my God. I couldn't even finish it. I got like three quarters of the way through and I was like, just make it stop. Make it stop. I just, I couldn't. Like I couldn't waste another second of my life on this book. I don't know exactly what it was. I was really intrigued by it. I was intrigued by the story and oh, she died and that's awful. And let me see what, you know, prolific thoughts she had. They just weren't that prolific. You know what I mean? This would be like if someone took my shitty stories and put them into a book after I die. And let me tell you, no one's gonna wanna read that book. But I, I don't know. Like I don't even, I, don't, I feel bad talking shit about it because you know, she died. But I guess not everyone is meant to be the most amazing, right? I don't know, maybe you like it. I'm gonna stop talking shit, but um, I personally don't like it and I would not recommend it to literally anyone. So I don't know, if you want it, you can have mine, let me know. Okay, now a book that I picked up and read that I was not planning on reading is The Home Is Fucking Burning, but it's just called Home Is Burning, um, a memoir by Dan Marshall. Now, this book, I also got an Audible, and it took me forever to listen to it. I think it was like 12 hours or something. I could be tripping, but it was super long. But I just couldn't stop listening to it because it's narrated by Dan Marshall, the author, and it's about um, his dad. Well, it's about him and um, his dad, well, his mom had cancer and has cancer and continued to kind of go through that. But his dad ended up getting Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, so he, basically documents what he and his siblings and his family and his parents and everything sort of went through from the moment like where he finds out to the moment you know where everything ultimately you know comes to a head I'll say uh, but it was just so it was just so interesting and it was so funny and it was like just so raw and real and um, typically this is not my style of book I don't care to read about someone's you know dying parents but it was just so good. I mean, I, I can't say enough good things about Home is Burning. I flew right through it. It was just, I mean, it was funny. It was kind of heartbreaking, but it was also like seriously like, heartbreaking and then like hysterical. So, um, I don't know. I LOL'd a few times, but I love the book. Um, but again, I listened to it on Audible where the author actually read it. So I think sometimes that sways my opinion on things because, um, you know, it's just more entertaining when he's reading it in his own voice. He knows what he meant and how he sounded and all of that. So um, I would highly recommend this book. It is a phenomenal read. I think I even made my mom buy it and she never read it. She never reads anything. She buys it because I recommend it, but then she doesn't read it. She don't love me. Okay, so another book that recently came out that I had mentioned um, I think I mentioned Betrayal, and it was um, the new series, the Infidelity series, by Aletha Rumig. Did I say it right? I don't know. You guys don't know how to say it either. Um, I should ask her, because her, I think her, like her publicist or someone, I think they'd reach out to me. I don't think I ever responded to that email. I'm going to ask her how to say her name. I'm going to ask, or I'm going to ask her on Twitter. Um, but anyway, the second book came out, so the first one's called Betrayal, the second one's called um, Cunning. It's funny, it says cover reveal coming soon, but the book came out like a minute ago. But anyway, I haven't quite finished it. I think I'm a little bit more than halfway through right now. Um, but it's a story of Charlie and Knox. And um, I mentioned how it kind of ended on like a cliffhanger of the first book and how I was so excited to get into the second book. So I'm liking it. I'm not like, I guess I was so, 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 so in love with her first series that it's, it's like I can't help but compare the two and I just love the characters more and I love the crazy like twists and turns and stuff and the first one so much more so like if I was looking at the series coming into it as just a new fan of hers um, I would probably love these books but because I know what she's done and like what she's capable of and how obsessed I can be with her books um, you know, I like these ones, but I don't love them the way that I did the first series. What was it called? The Truth Series or Consequences? Why can't I remember it? I 
don't know, but it was phenomenal. I've talked about it, like I swear, in every book club because I'm obsessed. But I'll let you guys know what I think of it, maybe, um, once I'm done with it. I'm Like I said, I'm about halfway through. Um, and then I know that the a bunch of you guys told me in the last book club that Me Before You, which did you guys see the trailer? Oh, it's so cute. I'm so excited for it. Um, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, it was in a previous book club, but it's called Me Before You by Jojo Moyes, I believe. Um, but anyway, you guys told me that there is a sequel to that, and I think it's called, it's like all about somebody? Okay, the next one is called After You, um, and that's the story, like, after, you know, everything went down in me before you, so I am totally gonna read that book. I'm probably gonna buy it and read it on the plane this week, or on the plane next week, or on the plane the week after that. Um, but anyway, now let me tell you guys what, uh, just a couple of books that I picked up. Um, I picked up probably 10, <laughs> but I don't want to like go on and on and on forever. So I'm just going to tell you about a few that I picked up um, and why I got them. So this one, so I haven't read any of these yet, um, but I've heard a good thing. So this is Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. Okay, so when I first bought this book, I didn't know that Jenny Lawson was the bloggist. Like, I know who the bloggist was because... I'm a blogger and I've been blogging for like five years and she's hilarious and I followed her on Twitter already. Um, I just didn't know that it was her, right? Because I'm not like a hardcore reader of her blog or anything, not these days at least. Um, but I just, I was like so excited. So, <laughs> um, she's so funny. So I'm sure that book is actually quite funny. And um, I just, yeah, it says that she explores her lifelong battle with mental illness. Um, a hysterical, ridiculous book about crippling depression and anxiety. Yay. So I'm sure it's very funny um, and I'm sure it actually, you know, will teach me a thing or two, which is usually what I'm looking for in those types of books. Um, another book that I picked up is called The Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll. I saw beauty crush, what's her name, Samantha? Um, I saw Samantha talking about it on her channel and she just seemed like, yes, this is amazing. I love this book, da da da. So I was like, okay, let me get this book because I just, I, now I can just, I just gotta got it. I gotta got it. <laughs> now I gotta get it. Um, so I picked this book up from Barnes & Noble and I mean I like to buy books in person like hard copy because that's just my thing but you can always get these books on Amazon. I'll link them on Amazon down below. Um, so I believe that people kind of compare this book to like Gone Girl. Um, I guess we'll see. I didn't read Gone Girl. I did watch the movie and I felt like wow if this was a book I probably couldn't have gotten through it because that movie was 10 years long. Not that it was bad or anything but it's just not really my style. Um, another book I got is called Big Magic Creative Living Beyond Fear and this is by Elizabeth Gilbert and this is by the same woman who wrote um, Eat Pray Love which I didn't read Eat Pray Love. Not really my thing. Um, so I'm not sure what really drew me to this book. I think it was the cover because it's really cute. Um, but it says, uh, on the back it says, creativity is sacred and it is not sacred. And what we make matters enormously and it doesn't matter at all. We toil alone and we are accompanied by spirits. We are terrified and we are brave. Art is a crushing chore and a wonderful privilege. The work wants to be made and it wants to be made through you. So um, I'm kind of interested to read this. I love books like this. So I kind of don't know what the hell to expect, but I'm usually pleasantly surprised. So this might be one of those books where I have someone read it to me, you know, like through Audible. We'll see. Luckiest Girl Alive, I will definitely be reading this myself because it's a novel versus self-help type of thing. And then finally I picked up Kelsey Miller's Big Girl, How I Gave Up Dieting and Got a Life. So I was so thoroughly impressed and excited with Things, when no, Things No One Will Tell Fat Girls by Jess Baker that I just felt like I have to get this book. I mean, a bunch of my blogging friends uh, were talking about it and I know like Kelsey Miller, she does stuff with um, Refinery29, probably says it on here. Yes, she's a feature, a senior features writer at Refinery29 and I've done working stuff with Refinery29 um, before, but anyway. Um, I was just excited to read about this book and to read it. So I wonder if it's on Audible. If it is, I'll probably read it through Audible. Um, let me know if you guys have read any of these books or if you have any recommendations, um, especially for especially for like novels, um, not necessarily like self-help or that kind of stuff because clearly I have that in droves over here. I have so many books. Oh, I should have brought my Judd Apatow book. I think it's called Sick in the Head. I left it downstairs in my bookcase. Um, but I bought Sick in the Head. I didn't buy that recently, but I still haven't read it, so I guess it's worth the mention. Um, and then I have some other new books back there, but we'll leave those for another time. So let me know if you guys read any of these books, what you thought, what you're reading now, what you want to see me read, what 
is happening in your life, what your cat's name is. I know a lot of people with a cat named Nala. That's kind of weird to ask my daughter's name, but I guess like Nala was actually originally a large cat. So I guess it kind of makes sense. I don't know. Anyway, let me know how you guys feel about just life in general, I guess. <laughs> this, this outro was taking a while, so I will see you guys in our next book club. Bye guys!